Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India. You're watching South Asia Newsline and here are the top stories we are tracking for you on Thursday, the 11th of January. Politics intensifies after Congress turns down Ram Mandir invitation. BJP hits out. UN Human Rights Reporter flags concern over police harassment of Baloch protests. And Maldives President upgrades relations with China amid dispute with India. And now for all the details. A day after India's main opposition Congress announced Party Supremo Sonia Gandhi and leaders Malika Arjun Kharge and Adhir Ranjan Chaudhary have turned down the invitation for the consecration ceremony at the newly built Ram Mandir in Ayodhya. The ruling BJP has lambasted the grand old party over its resolution. BJP spokesperson Sudhanshu Trivedi said the party rejected the invitation for a few radical votes. Accusing the grand old party of being against the Hindu religion, Trivedi said the Congress today is Nehru's Congress and not Gandhi's Congress. Mahatma Gandhi had the political philosophy of Ram Rajya and today when there's a consecration ceremony of that Ram Rajya, you are not there, he said. This is the way of 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 the way. परंतु उनकी बुद्धि परिष्कृत होने का नाम नहीं ले रही है आज जब अयोध्या में श्री रामलला विराजमान की प्राण प्रतिष्ठा होने जा रही है और उस समय एक बार पुनः कांग्रेस ने अपनी उसी प्रवृत्ति के अनुरूप क्योंकि यह भारत के इतिहास का ऐतिहासिक पल है बिगिनिंग ऑन जनवरी 16 द कंसेक्रेशन सेरेमनी ऑफ द आइडल ऑफ हिंदू गॉड लॉर्ड राम विल बी हेल्ड ओवर द स्पैन ऑफ 7 डेज Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi is scheduled to take part in the ceremony on 22nd of January for the installation of the idol in the newly built Grand Temple, which for decades was the national campaign pledge of BJP. And addressing the annual presser ahead of the Army Day celebrations, Indian Army Chief General Manoj Pandey on Thursday said Pakistan is aiding terrorist and terror-related activities in India's Jammu and Kashmir. Referring to the recent spike in attacks in the Union territory, particularly in Punch and Rajauri districts, General Pandey said India's adversaries have become active in the region as the situation is normalizing in the valley. Pakistan Army is trying to aggregate terrorism in the Rajauri Punch districts, he said. That has been a issue of concern to us. Now, if you see, after 2003, or by 2003, the terrorism in that area was fully disseminated, and then you have peace and stability returning there, or established there till about 2017-18. Now, because of situation getting or becoming normal in the valley. This is one area which our adversaries have been active in, in terms of abating terrorism, encouraging proxy tanzims operating in this area. Talking about the situation at the line of actual control, the de facto boundary between India and China General Pandey said the situation along the northern border is stable but sensitive. He said while the operational preparedness is very high, the army's deployment is robust and balanced. Both sides are also engaged in talks to find solutions to address their issues. India has long maintained that ties between New Delhi and Beijing cannot be normal until China adheres to past agreements. Moving on. Pakistan People's Party Chairman Bilawal Bhutto Zardari on Wednesday threw shade at his former ally, the Pakistan Muslim League Nawaz, saying that he won't let the Nawaz Sharif-led party run away from polls. Pakistan is set to hold the general elections on 8th of February after much ado. 
However, PML and slow key election ring has raised eyebrows as it delays ticket issuance to candidates. Bilawal's remark also came after a resolution was approved by the Senate last week, seeking a delay in the general election, citing cold weather and security concerns, increasing political uncertainty. The decision is, however, not binding and does not necessarily mean elections will be further delayed. The UN Human Rights Reporter has raised concerns over reports of police crackdown on Baloch protesters in Pakistani capital Islamabad. A report. UN Special Rapporteur on Human Rights Defenders, Mary Lawler, on Wednesday spoke to organizers of the Islamabad sit-in and expressed concern over reports of police harassment or protest against enforced disappearances in Balochistan. Lawler said spurious criminal complaints against peaceful protesters should be dropped as the Baloch activist informed her about situation, including absurd comments by Pakistan's caretaker PM terming them terrorist sympathizers. Meanwhile, protest leader Maharang Baloch refuted claims by a Balochistan minister that they were trying to seek asylum abroad. She said she would continue to reach out to the UN for the protection of the protesters. Activists have long accused that Baloch people have been targets of military operations and ethnic stereotyping by the Pakistani state. The situation is not highlighted by the local media, forcing them to seek intervention through global platforms. Ram Bahadur Bomjon, a Nepali man whom thousands believed was a reincarnation of the Buddha and who drew international attention as a teenager, has been arrested over allegation of rape and sexual abuse. The Central Investigation Bureau said on Wednesday they had arrested the 33-year-old from a house on the outskirts of Kathmandu after he had been on the run for several years. 30.3 million Nepali rupees and around 3 million foreign currencies were also confiscated from him. As a teenager, Bomjon became known as Buddha Boy after followers said he could meditate motionless for several days. And as India Maldives dispute escalates, President Mohammad Muizu upgraded the country's relation with China during his first visit to Beijing following a campaign in which he cast China's regional rival New Delhi as a threat to sovereignty. Speaking at an event, Xi Jinping called Muizu an old friend as the Asian giant set the stage for further investment in Maldives by agreeing to a comprehensive strategic cooperative partnership. She further said China and Maldives relations are facing a historic opportunity to carry forward the past and forge ahead into the future. Muizu took office in November after winning on his India Out campaign platform. His government has since asked dozens of locally based Indian military personnel to leave while talking up opportunities for Chinese investors despite being heavily indebted to Beijing. Meanwhile, scenic beach destinations in India's Lakshwadeep have hogged the limelight since PM Modi's recent visit which triggered a diplomatic row after absurd comments by Moldavian lawmakers. Tourists visiting the islands have expressed that Lakshwadeep is not less than Maldives. Several travel portals are witnessing all-time high searches for the beach destinations in Lakshwadeep. Amid the row, the Indian government has also started taking initiatives to boost tourism infrastructure, ushering an exciting phase for the travel landscape. I think the time will get short for us to explore the whole beauty of this land and uh, this serenity and this blue beaches, uh, this blue ocean, I think uh, the time will get less to explore the island and this is none less than Maldives I have seen, as I have seen the pictures of it and yes, we are enjoying a lot. Modi, once he visited. Uh, this place has become international uh, recognition and we hope people will come more in here and improve the livelihood also the people with, through the tourism. That's all in tonight's edition. We'll see you same time tomorrow. Good night. Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India.